All right, this is Seneca Harris. We are coming to you once again with another video blog, Tea Time Talk Sessions, brought to you by the Urban Coalition of Freelance Writers, where we shine the light on issues impacting the urban community. Now, this is installment two, or I guess you could say volume two of our Tea Time Talks um, sessions. Now, I'm here by myself today. Uh, we will be doing our um, podcast either Sunday night or Monday. I'm not sure yet, but you can join our Facebook page. We do have a group page. You can join us for updates, uh, video blogs, um, excerpts of our podcasts, all kind of stuff. So, you know, we're back. You know what I'm saying? We haven't gone anywhere. There's been a lot that has happened um, since we've been um, away. You know, a lot of celebrities have passed. Um, a lot of stuff has happened politically. Um, a lot of things, and we're going to be discussing it on our upcoming podcast, but today I come to you uh, for a very specific cause, or um, I guess you could say a very specific uh, subject I, wanna, I really want to talk to you, because I think one thing about it is we as a community are so caught up in religion still and religion it has its place and I believe that religion has carried us over but I don't even want to get into that because to me there's a difference between religion and spirituality and we're going to talk about that another day but our religion sometimes has held us back to discuss this issue or, or issues like these that I'm about to bring up to uh, the audience today, those of you that are listening, and it it's really has caused us to not focus in on this. We, we we hide from this issue in our churches, in our communities. We don't want to discuss this. We don't want to discuss this, and those who typically discuss these issues tend to be labeled as deviants or people that are crazy or you know why why are they talking about that you know that's inappropriate but you know what what's the inappropriate is how we're sitting here watching our youth dying we watching our, our our women dying because we're not discussing issues of sexuality and things pertaining to um, sexually transmitted diseases and how our community is one of the high one of the communities that is mostly infected by HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases we don't want to talk about um, issues dealing with sexuality you know and I believe religion has its place in it but we have to really get down to the root cause of things we have to look at things from a realistic point of view and today I'm just coming to you because I was inspired by a story that I've seen in the news and those of you that live in the Indianapolis area you you've heard of it there was a man living on the west side of Indianapolis um, in the Hallville area that has been responsible for spreading HIV to several women and he was not uh, responsible in letting them know that he was HIV positive and uh, this person was into drug usage they you know into using needles sharing needles and things of that nature and one of the women that he's with now I seen the news report where they were saying how she's tested negative but the but she's pregnant too so I, I pray to God that you know she you know she is she remains negative because a lot of times it takes time for these you know for those results to or that disease to manifest itself so I pray that she's not infected but I come to you today because I'm going to keep it real and um, I'm just gonna let you know from I will be posting up on Facebook um, an excerpt from an older show that we did entitled do you really know your man and I think a lot of these women need to hear this because 
a lot of these women are so caught up in a man and at what he can do for them sexually and it's he, he he's not even doing anything for them financially but it's all about them need needing a man in the home and, uh, and it may not even be just sexually it could be just because she needs a man a male figure for her son or her daughter and she's so thirsty for that that male role model of that attention that, she, that she'll take any man off the street the, she she doesn't do any background check on them. She doesn't know anything about his history, and she's willing to move this man into her house. And she doesn't have the pertinent facts about this individual. Not only that, she moves this man in the house, and she brings him around the children. Now the children are confused because they may have a no, no count deadbeat daddy, and she's bringing man after man after man in the house, and these men are telling them what they want them to hear, and a lot of these women, they get caught up on a man's penis size, they get caught up on what a man says or what his little swagger or. Uh, tattoos, all that bull crap, and they neglect to ask that man. They they think they think that the man is exempt from being on the down low or sleeping with multiple women because they they got the they got the man in the house, and this is just not an African American thing. This this is a, it goes clear across the board. I've seen this in several communities, not just the black community. The down low affects everyone and I'm so sick and tired of society making it look like it's a black thing but we are the ones that are being affected by this because we don't want to look at this from a point of view our churches don't want to talk about this we don't want to address this as a community now see we, we want to rally and march and talk about you know freedom and rights and stuff like that and we're liberal when it comes to that but when it comes to issues dealing with sexuality and dealing with sex in general, we want to be all conservative about that. See what I'm saying? But that we're going to say that to another day. But what I'm saying is, women, I will tell you straight up. Don't be caught up on a man's look, penis size, or what he tells you. And you think because you think he's a quote-unquote straight 100%, excuse my language, nigga, that... You don't have to worry about him slipping around with a man on the side or this woman over there. You know, a lot of you women don't want to look at that. And I'm here to let you know, because I love you, as my sisters out there, I love you. I'm going to tell you, don't be caught up in all that and overlook the fact that this man's out here doing all this stuff because you're going to be another statistic. Just like these women that were infected by HIV and the woman that she that he was with this man was with this woman got her pregnant now we don't even know if the baby's gonna be positive we don't know if the woman's gonna be positive you know all she could do right now is just keep getting tested and you know and you expect these people out here to tell you the truth to look out for you I'm going to tell you something in 2011 going on to 2012 these people are not thinking about you and you better get real and you better get educated about HIV, STDs. Go get yourself tested. You need to know your status. And you need to know what you're doing out here and who you're doing it with. Now, if you're going to be promiscuous, okay, ain't nobody going to stop you from doing that. But protect yourself. Protect yourself. If you're, going, if you're not going to listen to what I say, and you're going to keep bringing man after man, after man in, your, in, in your Section A housing, not gonna go there but if you gonna keep doing that at least protect yourself like seriously if you gonna if, if you don't listen to anything else I say protect yourself nobody else is gonna do it for you don't think because you on birth control you gonna let him hit it raw raw dog and all that and you you think cause birth control birth control that's good that you on birth control but you need the maximum protection. You need to protect yourself on all fronts and levels. 
You know what I'm saying? You don't know who this man has been with. You need to get tested together. You need to ask this man questions. Ask him, has he, does he mess around with men and women? Ask him his sexual history. You know, uh, I'm not saying walk around being, you know, be a, being a paranoid, schizophrenic, blankety blank. But what I'm saying is, you have to look out for yourself. And, and stop bringing these men into your home, especially if you got children. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not going to keep rambling on, but my thing is, women, you've got to be more vigilant. You have to be. And I'm, tell, I'm telling you this. I'm, just, I'm not going to go, and you know, I'm not about exposing people's business, but I'm telling you. You have to know what you're doing out here and who you're doing it with. Because I'm telling you this now. You think because your man is masculine, you think that your man got these tattoos, you think your man done got out of prison, you know what I'm saying, you done got you a roughneck thug, you think you ain't got to worry about that, and I'm telling you this now. You cannot judge somebody's sexuality or sexual preference on their mannerisms. You can't do it. Why do you think all this stuff is going on in the church right now? While all this, all this, you know, this, this scandal and all this stuff going on, and pastors and preachers and and people in the ministry are being outed daily. You think these people? You would think these would be the last people that are on the DL. And that's why I'm saying, don't get caught up on appearances. You have to dig deep. You have to know your man. You got to know your history. Furthermore, most importantly, you need to know yourself. Know yourself. You know, and I'm telling you, I do not, I, I didn't want to get on here and do this thing, but I felt that it was necessary. You know, and I'm just letting you know, and I can't stress this enough. You know, get tested. Know who you're doing things with. You know, research people. You know, I mean, it, it doesn't, it, you know, in most states they have like, uh, criminal um, searches, you know, you can do searches on, you know, by state, you know, to see what people have been in jail for, if they've been in prison, have been in, they have sex offender registries, and I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you a good 90, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be very, I'm going to be nice about it, I'm going to say, a good 95%. Of these women ain't even looking at, at the sex offender registry when they moving these men in or when they talking to these men. Especially women that already have children by other men. Now, I'm just saying this and I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I don't want to see another story in the news where another innocent woman... Let her guard down and she is going through a situation like this. You know, and like I said, we're going to be posting up more stories about this. We're going to uh, put up an excerpt from a show that we did some months back. It's almost been a year ago when we did this show. But I really think a lot of people need to hear these clips from a show that we did. Episode 10, I believe, Do You Really Know Your Man? And I really want you guys to comment on this video. Tell me what you think. Um. Leave your comments, you know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, if you got something negative to say, just keep it to your damn self. Because we really trying to talk about an issue that's really impacting, particularly the African-American community. If you don't have anything positive to add, if you don't have anything constructive to say, keep your comments to yourself because I will block you or I will read you online. So I'm going to let you guys know this is a serious topic. If you don't have anything positive to say, keep it to yourself. And I'm, and I'm trying to refrain from cussing because I'm trying to remain professional. But I'm just going to let you guys know. You can check us out. You can send us an email at ucofw at live.com. We're looking for commentators uh, from different, in Indianapolis, all around the country where, you know, we can get different points of views on things. Um, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, Check us out on blogtalkradio.com slash ucofw. We're going to try to start getting back in our new season, new schedule. Uh, things we're going to at least have uh, one to two shows a week. And pretty much that's about it. Um, until next time, stay blessed. Be careful out there. Know what you're doing and know who you're doing it with.
Have a blessed day.